cities today are already at the heart of our electrical use. They're where we end up using the vast majority of our electricity. And the world is now undergoing the largest transition in history. Today, more than half the world's population lives in urban environments, and that's going to increase to 60% by 2030 of almost 8 billion people. Thinking through the complex urban environment of the future stimulated a lot of great ideas from the summit, and we can't cover them all here. From ways to reduce energy usage, to increasing the efficiency of moving electricity into our cities, to more effective ways of using electricity to provide for one of our city's major challenges, building efficient, low-carbon transportation systems that can move all the people around in these growing megacities. The pathway incorporated in, into the blueprint captures many of these diverse contributions around two core ideas. The first is electri electrification of transport, particularly leveraging a combination of battery technologies for different types of vehicles and information technologies for coordinating more effective network transport systems. And the second is smart electrical grid design, which considers both how superconducting materials may be valuable for bringing in ever-increased amounts and density of energy into our, into our high population city cores, and also smart grids for managing the flow of electricity in our cities and reducing the overall usage. In uh, contrast to today's power grid, a smart grid enables two-way flows of electricity and of information through sensors, monitoring, communications, and distribution system automation. Smart energy networks, in essence, build upon the smart grid, integrating them with natural gas networks, distributed generation, and district heating and cooling networks. There are five interrelated approaches under what we call smart urbanization. They include efficient use, enabled by smart grid technologies through real-time feedback of energy consumption, promotion of, of course, public and self-powered transport, advanced information and communication technologies for transport, electrification of transport, and superconductors as delivery conduits for provision of high levels of electric electricity service in highly dense urban areas where the constraint on geography is, is, is a very tight geographic footprint. Although smart grids can alleviate the need for increased demand to some degree, smart urbanization translates into a requirement to do more within a smaller geographic footprint. Part of this solution then is that this can be efficiently met through superconducting transmission and distribution infrastructure with a much lower physical footprint, and a higher carrying capacity. Superconductors offer opportunity to dramatically increase the capacity and efficiency of power transmission with a much lower footprint. They achieve this by allowing much more current to pass through narrower wires, and this feature would be highly valued in a denser environment. The challenges for smart urbanization are of course, related to the interoperability, enabling new and existing technologies to exchange information for effective functionality. Electrification of transport I just mentioned. There are higher capital costs uh, associated with a number of these technologies, so the first cost installations are issues. And superconducting technology has not matured sufficiently, and the economics are still challenging for its deployment at scale in dense urban areas and requires extensive testing and in the near term. In coming decades, our cities could incorporate intelligent infrastructure to develop neutral carbon communities. We can start off by reducing waste through building retrofits and efficiencies in demand side management. Making our electricity grid smart would allow better demand management and electricity to flow back into the grid. Electrification of transport is key to reducing emissions in urban areas. Deploying ICT technologies can bring implementation to, to encourage car sharing and other communal forms of transport and delivery. We recommend continued research and planning for smart cities and the application of smart technologies that Jason and Jatin described to you. There are a plethora of low-hanging fruit that can be taken advantage of 
with good planning and enlightened governance to make our cities more efficient.